All right, so um, in this session, we are going to do a cursory review of minerals. So if you are in week five of nutrition, um, I'm going to go over uh, quickly. Uh, it's about a half hour, there's 30 slides here. I'm gonna skim through some of them and just give you the highlights, a uh, little micro learning here on uh, minerals. All right, so let's get started. The human body is definitely requiring minerals to perform specific metabolic reactions. The minerals are a cofactor in, in the involvement of metabolic reactions. So the major minerals are uh, calcium, phosphorus, sodium, potassium, magnesium, chloride, and sulfur. You're gonna need about 100 milligrams per day, more than that, but that's the minimum. And trace minerals, you're gonna need less than 100 milligrams per day. And there are only about 18 elements that are trace minerals that are um, in your uh, required in your uh, body for um, optimal um, health. Now, uh, the function of minerals is for bone um, and other uh, tissue development. Uh, and of course, metabolic processes, as I mentioned, in terms of cofactor in metabolic reactions. So the mineral metabolism, uh, what is it involved in? It's involved in digestion. Um, the minerals do not require much digestion, but um, what's going to happen is you're going to get absorption um, of these ionic forms. And um, depending on what food you eat, um, and the body, what it needs. And of course, getting enough is going to um, either create tissue health or not. Um, so we're going to go over um, how it enters through the portal circulation. It can be bound to proteins. Um, it can be um, uptake. There's an uptake of it um, by the tissue, uh, which is uh, controlled by specific uh, hormones. And um, the basic forms can be uh, as a free ion or it can be covalently bonded. Now we can get major minerals in our foods um, and it'll provide adequate uh, energy intake. And this is the best way to get enough uh, minerals uh, to sustain life. Now the total amount of minerals a person consumes is only a relatively limited amount of bioavailability in the body. So um, we are not gonna use up all the minerals that we actually take in. Now, calcium is one of the most important uh, minerals because it is involved obviously in bone production and tooth formation, blood clotting. It's a cofactor in um, the process, the cascading of blood clotting, uh, the, the uh, muscle and nerve, um, contraction of the muscle and, and nerve uh, action. Metabolic reactions also is uh, important to have um, calcium involved in during these processes. So having a nice variety um, or varied diet is going to provide enough calcium to meet your daily intake. Now, if you have a deficiency uh, during the growth years, this puts you at risk for certain bone deformities and delay in bone growth. Um, is there any toxicity to calcium? Yes. If you take too much calcium, um, you know, it, it's usually due to supplementation and it can calcify soft tissue, um, decrease bioavailability of other essential nutrients. Um, but the food sources are obviously the easiest one to recall is like cheese and milk, right? Now, um, with osteoporosis, um, you know, if you don't have that calcium absorption, thanks to vitamin D, um, calcium and vitamin D uh, supplementation is warranted. Too much vitamin D is actually dangerous because it can calcify arteries and tissues. So there has to be a balance. I'm going to skip over case studies because, like I said, I'm just going over a cursory review of these minerals. The next one I'm going to go over is phosphorus. Phosphorus is also involved in bone and tooth formation, energy metabolism, acid-base balance. Uh, again, it, it is a varied approach based on age and needs for specific um, people uh, at different stages of their life. Now, if you have a deficiency, um, how can this occur when you're taking a lot of antacids? containing aluminum hydroxide, it can actually uh, cause a deficiency of phosphorus. Toxicity, unlikely from just taking food, but if you're doing uh, supplementation, 
Um, if the phosphorus is higher than the calcium intake for a long period of time, then resorption can occur, which means more osteoclastic activity or bone breakdown versus bone development. The food sources are high protein foods where you can get phosphorus and plant seeds. All right, now sodium is a really important one because it establishes balance thanks to osmosis and process of osmotic pressure. If water um, is going to reabsorb um, and not be um, uh, urinated out as urine output, it usually is due to sodium getting reabsorbed at the kidney tubules and then water follows thanks to a hormone called ADH, antidiuretic hormone, which comes from the posterior pituitary. Now, sodium intake is important. You do need some sodium, too much is no good. Obviously you're gonna retain more water, which is gonna increase blood volume, which therefore is gonna increase blood pressure. And if you have cardiac issues, you really don't wanna put stress on the heart. So you really wanna lose blood volume to lower the blood pressure. So too much salt can increase the blood pressure and that's called hypernatremia. And where do you get salt? Obviously table salt, putting it in your food, animal products, carrots, beets, leafy greens, and celery. All right, now next one, super important is potassium. Too much potassium can kill you. Too little potassium can kill you. So you can have hypokalemia, which is too low or hyperkalemia, which is too high. All right, so how do you get potassium? Well, basically um, you can get it from leafy greens, bananas has a high level of potassium. Oranges, potatoes, vegetables, fish, whole grains, legumes, seeds, and milk products. The function of potassium is water balance because of the sodium potassium acting inversely at the kidney tubules. Metabolic reactions, um, potassium is super important for metabolic reactions, muscle action, even insulin release and maintaining, of course, as I mentioned, uh, blood pressure based on the whole uh, reuptake of sodium releasing potassium. Um, so secreting potassium, but reabsorption of sodium, which is going to cause a reabsorption of water, increase in blood volume, and therefore blood pressure. So the average intake for a woman, um, it, but less than the established, um, is, is different than for a man. So um, it is a little bit less than the 3.4 grams for a man. Now, if there's a deficiency, more likely it could be caused by vomiting, diarrhea, malnutrition, or post-op, all right? Post-op surgical cases, you may have some potassium imbalance. Too much, and it's usually due to oral intake of potassium for whatever reason in the hospital, IV intake, et cetera. Now, chloride is the next one. Um, function is for digestion and respiration. The need for chloride will decline as you age 50 and up, you're gonna need less chloride. So the deficiency is primarily due to vomiting. Toxicity is known to cause, um, uh, it's, a, it's the only known dietary cause. And um, it's, it's usually gonna be severe dehydration where you have this chloride toxicity. All right, where do you get the source? Uh, Cause you know, salt is sodium chloride, sodium is, an ion, so um, it binds with uh, chloride. All right, so next one is magnesium. Too much magnesium, you will get diarrhea. All right, nausea, vomiting. So a lot of people like to do supplementation of magnesium. Why? Well, magnesium is important for metabolic reactions, metabolism, for protein synthesis, muscle action. And obviously, if you're low in magnesium, you can have cramping. Everyone says that, everyone knows that. So deficiency. Um, can be rare if you have a, a balanced diet, uh, but it um, is it does occur, especially if you have renal dis uh, disorders, um, if you're um, anorexic uh, or you're vomiting long-term or you have long-term diarrhea, meaning for more than three to four days, right? And then genetic mutations, which is rare. So magnesium, where do you get it from? Nuts, soybeans, legumes, whole grains, oats, Cocoa and hard water apparently is high in magnesium. All right, so super important to get enough magnesium. Too much, bad. Too little, bad. So nice little balance there. Next one is sulfur. We can use sulfur for our hair, nails, and skin. It is involved in general metabolic function, vitamin structure, 
Um, and collagen structure, the normal collagen does have a, you know, collagen molecule does have, um, you know, the collagen fibers does have sulfur. Now, um, where do you get it from? Protein foods, deficiency. If you have a protein malnutrition, you're going to have uh, decreased sulfur. Toxicity, unlikely from just dietary intake. Where do you get sulfur from? Well, you know, the rotten egg smell, there's a reason for it, and it is sulfur. So you get it from eggs, meat, cheese, milk, legumes, and nuts. So based on the next topic is trace, L, uh, trace minerals. And these elements um, you will get from a mixed variety of foods. And of course, it provides adequate energy intake um, with this variety of food. And yes, you will get your trace minerals uh, necessary to sustain life. Okay, of the total amount of minerals a person consumes, a very relatively limited amount is actually bioavailable. Um, so just keep that in mind. The first one that we can talk about is iron and iron deficiency anemia. If you don't get enough iron in your diet, you have iron deficiency anemia, causes immune system issues. Uh, the hemoglobin um, is going to not get enough iron. So you're not going to have enough hemoglobin to sustain oxygen transport. So Therefore, um, iron deficiency is an issue. So you need to take iron, but always take colase with it because iron does, you know, constipate. Too much iron can kill you. So it is very, very super important that you follow instructions and take the proper dosage of iron. Don't overdo it with the iron. Now, if you want to get iron naturally, obviously everyone knows eat more spinach, meat, fortified cereals, some vegetables, and by the way, if you put on your spinach salad, you put some lemon juice on there or squeeze a lemon or cut up some oranges, good for you because the vitamin C in these uh, citrus fruits will uh, enhance the absorption of iron. All right, moving on to iodine. Iodine, super important. This is why in, I think it was in the 1950s, don't quote me on that, is when they decided to, um, make salt um, accessible with iodine. Note that if you're taking um, the salt that's not the table salt, and let's say you're, you know, with your diet using uh, sea salt, make sure that it has iodine, iodine in it. A lot of it doesn't. If you don't get enough iodine, it is super important to get it because otherwise, the hormone thyroxine, which regulates metabolism, thyroxine is released by the thyroid gland, T3, T4, T4 is the active version, and it regulates your metabolism. If you don't have enough iodine, you can end up with goiter. So that's deficiency of iodine. Now, uh, if you're born with hypothyroidism, it's called cretinism. Um, if, it's, if you're an adult, then it's just, um, obviously you're not just, you just need to get, um, iodine and you have hypothyroidism. Now, um, excess iodine, iodine supplements can lead to thyrotoxicosis or iodine-induced hyperthyroidism. So the healthy dose is 1,100 micrograms per day. And the food sources is seafood and iodized uh, table salt. As you can see here, uh, the thyroid releasing hormone from the hypothalamus is going to stimulate the anterior pituitary to release um, the thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone is going to flood the bloodstream and move to the thyroid gland. And the thyroid stimulating uh, receptor is going to be receptive to the thyroid stimulating hormone, a series of metabolic reactions, and bam, you release T3, T4. T4 is the uh, thyroxine, which regulates metabolism. This is what a goiter looks like. Moving on is zinc. Zinc is super important for enzyme function, DNA, RNA, protein synthesis, energy metabolism, and of course, food intake and your immune system function will is super important. Like let's say it's flu season, zinc. Zinc is it. You have to take a little bit more zinc. All right. So if you have a deficiency, it can lead to a myriad of issues, including immune system issues. Toxicity is very uncommon for, from food sources, but if you do uh, supplements, all right, you um, will have some toxicity if you go above the 40 milligrams per day. 
Where do you get it from? You get zinc in uh, meat, seafood, legumes, and whole grains. This is what happens when you don't have enough zinc. All right, selenium. So probably not heard much about selenium, but it is essential uh, for body tissues. Um, glutathione peroxidase is an enzyme and selenium is in the process of uh, making that enzyme. Selenoproteins, which protects um, against your free radical formation, which causes cancer. So you need to have a, a healthy dose of selenium too little and um, your immune system is not functioning properly. Too much, you get hair loss, joint pain, nail discoloration, GI upset. 14 years and older, um, pretty much you need about 400 micrograms per day. Sources, pork, turkey, lamb, chicken, organ meats, fish, whole grains, seeds, and Brazil nuts. So if you are a vegetarian, make sure you eat seeds and Brazil nuts and specific whole, grain, whole grains to make sure that you're getting enough selenium. All right, lots of controversy with fluoride, but we do need fluoride. It accumulates in calcified body tissues. So again, you just need the right amount and you'll find it in our water supply, crab, shrimp, raisins, grape juice, hot breakfast cereals, and tea. Copper, never thought of copper that you need it, but yes, we do have some copper in our blood, very little amount. Um, this is the upper limit is 10 milligrams a day and you need, uh, where do you get it from? Again, you need a certain amount up to 10 milligrams and you get it from organ meats, veal, beef, lamb, oysters, and legumes. The next one is manganese. This one is a component of cell enzymes. There's no known deficiency with unrestricted diet and the upper limit is only 11 milligrams per day in healthy adults. All right. So this is what happens when you're not getting enough Minerals, your teeth will pay the price. So get your minerals in. Now, other trace minerals that are really not very popular, molybdenum, uh, chromium, and other trace minerals like aluminum, arsenic, boron, nickel, silicon, tin, and vanadium. The dietary deficiency is unlikely with these very, very trace minerals, but uh, molybdenum and uh, chromium, if it's um, inadequate, um, it's really not um, an issue, uh, but it is a component of several enzymes. Chromium, um, the essential component of the organic complex glucose tolerance factor. So just little, little trace information there on those very unpopular and unknown trace minerals. So again, um, we really don't really uh, particularly look for these trace minerals to take them as supplements there you'll get them in your diet all right um so again the same principles apply as in with vitamin supplement supplementation uh when you're pregnant and lactating you need more of everything all right adolescents you need more of everything adulthood uh, and then certain clinical needs and certain clinical situations the body's use of certain minerals uh, are are needed more than the average diet can supply. So for example, a post-op surgical um, um, management. All right, so with respect to post-op surgical management, you wanna look at these trace uh, minerals and make sure that there's no imbalance. And of course, as I said earlier, typically post-op uh, patients will have uh, the most common uh, electrolyte imbalances like sodium and potassium. All right. So I hope this was a quickie micro learning session and I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you later. Bye everyone.